Are you excited to be in the presence of God? Hallelujah. The best thing to be in the presence of God is to allow God to move and to walk in your life. Amen. So this morning we are talking about fruitfulness. And we are going to deal with the kind of fruit that God expects from us. Now, it would be unfair for me to talk about the kind of fruit that God expects from us without discussing or laying the foundation on how we get to bear the kind of fruit that God expects from us. Amen? Are you tracking with me? So I want us to turn the book of John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verse 1. If you turn with me there quickly, John chapter 15, verse 1. And the Bible says, Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. John chapter 15, verse 1. Are you there? John chapter 15, verse 1. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. Now, I want you to understand something that it would be impossible, nearly impossible for us to understand what Jesus meant by saying that I'm the true vine. And verse 5 says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Now it would be nearly impossible for us to understand the entire concept without understanding what a vine means. When Jesus says, I am the true vine, what does he mean? Now we understand that a vine is the source supplier to the branches. In other words, it is impossible for the branches to bear fruit without the vine supplying the water and the nutrients to the branches. Are you tracking with me? Now, in the same case applies that it is impossible for us as the branches to bear fruit without receiving from Jesus, who is our vine. The Bible says that Jesus has supplied everything we need for life and for godliness. He has supplied his spirit. He has supplied his grace. He has supplied his wisdom and knowledge. He has supplied even his word. He has supplied his blood and, and the cross. Now it is impossible for us as the branches to bear fruit without receiving from Jesus. Now there lies the mystery between the branches and the vine. Are you tracking with me? Are you understanding? Now in order for the branches to bear fruit, as a branch, you need to receive from Jesus. You need to accept whatever Jesus is supplying to you. Are you understanding? You need to make room for whatever Christ is supplying to you. The wisdom. You need to make room for the word of God in your life. You need to make room for the spirit of God to move in your life. Are you tracking with me? You need to make room in order for you to bear fruit. You need to allow Jesus to have his way in your life. Amen. Somebody say, have your way, God. Now, there lies the, the entire concept about the, the vine and the branches. Now, Jesus said, I am the true vine. And my father is the gardener. Now, what does it mean by the father is the gardener? It means that the father is the supreme authority. He is the one who determines what to do with the branches. He is the caretaker of the tree. He ensures that the vine has everything it needs in order for the branches to bear fruit. That's where we see in the Old Testament when God called Adam and he created man. The Bible says he released a command in the spirit of man and said, I have called you. Go therefore and be fruitful. Are you understanding? He released a command in the human spirit to be fruitful. And the Bible says, as far as the gardener, the Bible says that when God called Moses and delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, the scripture says that God gave Moses the law. Are you understanding? As the gardener, it's the it's a, it's a expectation of God. It is the desire of God that we may bear fruit. Destiny, it's all about fruitfulness. Are you getting me? Destiny, fulfilling destiny, it's all about fruitfulness. That's why when Jesus, when God called Moses and called him to deliver the children of Israel, the Bible says that God gave him the law. But in fact, as God, as the gardener, supplying the law to the children of Israel, they still did not bear the fruit that God expected. That's why God as a gardener found it important to send Jesus, the son of God, to die on the cross for our sins. 
so that by the blood of Jesus and by the cross and by the grace of God and by him supplying a spirit, we can have everything we need in order to be able to bear fruit. Are you understanding me? So Jesus says that I am the true vine. And my father is the gardener. And verse 3 continues and he lays down the responsibilities of the father as the gardener. The Bible says he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. The father cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. In other words, God comes in our lives and cuts off wrong mindsets. Are you understanding? Wrong belief systems. It cuts off our pride. It cuts off our bitterness, our pain, our wound. Anything that is causing us not, us not to bear fruit. The Father's the supreme authority. He comes and cuts it off so that we can be able to bear fruit. Are you tracking with me? So the Bible says that the gardener, the Father, comes and cuts off every branch in me that does not bear fruit. The resentment, the anger, the bitterness, the pain, the wounds, everything in us that is causing us not to fulfill destiny, that is causing us not to become what God has called us to become, anything that is causing us not to walk in the fullness of Christ. God, the Bible says, God as a father, God the gunner comes and cuts off every branch in us. But the question remains, will you as a branch, will you allow the father to cut you? And he continues, he says, it cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, it prunes. Now, one thing I want you to understand is that in both cutting and pruning, there's some pain. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So it, it prunes every branch that bears fruit so that I can bear much more fruit. I want you to ask you a question. Have you ever thought that, you know, God has dealt with me and now... At least now I can be able to love people. Now I'm, I'm having some peace. Only later on to find that God comes and brings another trial. Another test. To test your love level. You want to go and say, I thought I'm good. Why are you pruning me? Because God wants you to bear more fruit. I know you've been asking yourself, God, why are you dealing with me? When will I get some rest? Are you understanding me? When can I get some rest from life? Because if it is not this, I'm dealing with this. If it not, it's not this, it's another thing. Then why? Because God wants you to bear more fruit. So let me tell you something. The issue, the thing that, uh, the reason why, you know, uh, let, me, let me put it like this. You know, most of the time we think that because, because you are facing trials and tribulations and persecutions and all that. Most of the times we think it's because I've done something wrong. I want to correct that. Sometimes you go through pain because God wants you to bear much more fruit. The reason why you're going through issues is because you're bearing fruit. And God wants you to bear more. God wants you to bear more fruit. That's where God, God cuts us off. That's where God prunes us so that he can bear more fruit. So how does God prune us? How does God cut us off? How does God deal with us? Number one is through correction and rebuke. Are you understanding me? I know you're asking yourself, God, why are you rebuking me? I'm already walking in your way. It's not sub. Because God wants you to bear more fruit. He wants you to bear more kingdom fruit. Are you understanding me? He wants you to bear more godly fruit. He wants you to be lucky. That's why he's correcting you. That's why he's rebuking you. The Bible says, and Paul said, then let them be rebuked so that they can be restored back to faith. Are you understanding me? That's why the Lord allows his word to correct us. He allows his word to correct us. The word of God comes to shape us. Because the word of God is Jesus himself. Are you understanding me? In order for us to become more like Jesus, we need to allow the word of God to prune us. We need to allow the word of God to cut off some things that are not like him. Are you understanding me? We need to allow the word of God to prune us and take away anything that can hinder us from being fruitful. So God comes and rebukes us and corrects us so that he may shape us to become like him. And let me tell you something. God will continue pruning you until you go to be with him. Are you understanding me? Because we are on a journey to become more like Jesus. 
So the Bible says that it comes to prune, to prune us. Another way that God, that God uses to prune us is through processes. You need to allow God to take you through processes. That's why Jesus said, when you walk through the fire, do not be afraid because it will not consume you. When you go and you walk through the waters, do not be afraid because they will not overwhelm you. What the fire does, it comes to purify us. Are you understanding what I'm saying? The fire, the word of God comes to purify us. The processes, the persecutions, the, the waiting that we need to wait, all these things, they come to prune us so that we can become more like him. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So you need to allow God to, you need to allow yourself to go through the processes that God is taking you through. Is God making you to wait? Are you understanding me? God promised you that you bless you. But it seems like the promises of God are not coming to pass. Is God making you to wait? Are you dealing with difficult people in your life today? Are you experiencing some persecutions in your life today? Allow yourself to go through the process because they are shaping you. They are shaping your character. They are, they are causing you to enter into maturation. To mature in God. Glory be to God. So Jesus says that my father is a gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that has bear fruit, he prunes so that I'll be even more fruitful. In verse 3, the Bible says, you're already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Tell your neighbor, stay connected. Stay connected to Jesus. Are you understanding me? You need to, to remain in the vine. Don't just allow, when you said, allow the, allow the vine, allow the supply of the vine. Allow the word of God receive from the Father, but also remain in him, stay connected to him. The word remain in him means to continue with him. Continue with Jesus. Continue in him, continue in fellowship with him. Continue walking with God. Because as you continue walking with God, God will tell you, uh-uh, that is not on me. You know, you need to be more patient. You need to love people more. God will continue shaping you as you continue to walk with him. So remain in the vine. Continue to be connected in Jesus. Do not disconnect yourself from fellowship. Do not disconnect yourself from the word of God. Do not disconnect yourself from the place of prayer. Stay connected in Jesus. Somebody says, stay connected in Jesus. Now, I want us to look at the kind of fruit that God expects from us. So, if you turn with me in the book of Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. And I want us to see something. They read it in the, in, in the skit. But I want us to see something, Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Let me start verse 16. It says, so I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They in conflict with each other, so that you're not, you're not to do whatever you want. But if you're led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Galatians chapter 5 from verse 22 talks about the fruit of the spirit. So the number one kind of fruit that God expects from you is the fruit of the spirit. Tell your neighbor the fruit of the spirit. Now, it is impossible to bear the fruit of the spirit without the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. The kingdom fruit or godly fruit you cannot bear it in the energy or the strength of the flesh. Are you understanding me? You cannot bear it in the wisdom of man. You cannot bear it in the power of the world. It is impossible. The kingdom fruit or godly fruit can only be bore by the power and the strength of the Holy Ghost. The fruit of the Spirit is a result of the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. The Bible says in the book of Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, 
When God sent Zechariah the prophet to Zerubbabel, he said to him, go and tell Zerubbabel that it is not by might nor by power, but it is by the Holy Spirit. That the, you have laid the foundation, but this temple is shall build it by shouts of grace, grace to it. Are you understanding me? It is impossible to bear kingdom fruit. Fruit that remains everlasting fruit without the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit. Without the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. So in this verse we have just read, Paul says, walk ye in the Spirit. Be led of the Holy Spirit. In other words, be sensitive to the dictates of the Holy Spirit. That's why I'm telling you, stay connected to the Holy Ghost. Stay, stay connected in the presence of God. Stay connected to the Word of God. Are you understanding me? Because the Holy Spirit gives us wisdom on how to bear godly fruit. The Holy Spirit gives us wisdom. He empowers us. He guides us. He leads us. He shows us in which areas in our lives where we are not bearing fruit. He shows us where we are impatient. He shows us where we are not loving as we should. He shows us where we are not kind. The Holy Spirit. You need to allow the Holy Spirit to do his work in your life. Are you understanding me? That's it. It's very important to surrender and submit to the Holy Ghost. It's important to lay down your life in the presence of God. And allow God to work in you. Allow God to shape you. Allow God to form you. So the Bible says, if you walk by the Spirit and be led of the Spirit, you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. In other words, if you sow in the flesh, you will reap in the flesh. But if you sow in the things of the Spirit, you will reap in the Spirit. Are you understanding me? I remember there's a certain thing I used to struggle with a lot. And I decided, let me give myself to prayer. And I gave myself to prayer. And the more I gave myself to prayer, the flesh was weakened. And it lost its power over me. Are you understanding? So if you sow in the flesh, you reap from the flesh. And you reap the, flu the fruits of the flesh. But if you sow in the spirit, you will reap the fruit of the spirit. Are you understanding me? That's it's very important to stay in the presence of God. To stay connected to Jesus. To stay to give yourself to prayer. To give yourself to the word of God. To be open to the, to be sensitive to the dictates of the spirit. Are you understanding me? Let me tell you something. When the Holy Spirit tells you something, do it. Are you getting what I'm saying? And I want to read another verse. Galatians still chapter 5 and verse 22. The Bible says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. The Bible says those who live in the spirit, they have crucified the flesh and, it, and its desires. The moment you say not what the flesh is saying, you're crucifying the flesh. Are you understanding me? When the flesh tells you do not forgive that person and you choose to forgive them because that is the word of God, then you're crucifying the flesh. When you give yourself to prayer, when you give yourself to the word of God, then you're crucifying the flesh. When you choose, when you choose, when you choose to do the word of God, and God has given you the willpower to choose life. God has given you the willpower to choose what is right. God has given you the willpower to choose the way of Christ. So the Bible says that when you crucify the flesh, then you empower the spirit man. Are you understanding me? But the moment you keep sowing and investing in the things of the flesh, then you will reap the fruits of the flesh. So God expects from us as children of the Most High God. God expects from us the fruit of the Spirit. And one of the fruit of the Spirit is love. Love. Tell your neighbor love. 
And God is the standard of love. The world is not the standard of love. Jesus said, if you love your neighbor because they love you, how, how, how profitable is that? How impactful is that? Are you understanding me? So God is the standard of love. And we see God giving his son Jesus Christ. To die on the cross. The Bible says in the book of Romans. That while we were yet seen as Christ died for us. That God demonstrated his love. That while we were yet seen as Christ died for us. So God is our standard of love. Jesus said there's no other love than this. Than a man to lay down his life for another. Are you understanding me? God is love. God is love. He loves us even when we fail him. He loves us even when we are still sinning intentionally. God loves us so much so that even before we said sorry, he sent his son to down the cross for us. His only begotten son, even without a guarantee. Are you getting what I'm saying? So God is the standard of love. You do not need to look to the world as a standard of love. God is the standard of love. And the definition of love to God is sacrifice. Doing everything I need to do for the person I love. Loving them even they do not want anything to do with me. As difficult as we are, God still loves us. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it defines love. It says love is patient. Are you patient? Are you patient with your brother? Are you patient with your sister? Love is kind. Are you kind to them? Kindness is all about being sensitive to other people. Are you understanding me? You don't have to roughen people up. Eh? Be kind. Tell your neighbor, be kind. Oh. Be kind. Are you understanding me? Be kind. Be sensitive. Are you understanding? And the Bible says love is kind. Love is patient. Love rejoices over what is true. It's amazing how in the body of Christ today, we rejoice when we see, we call them our enemies, eh? We rejoice when we see them for, ah, that is not the spirit of God. That is not the spirit of God. Because the spirit of God is the spirit of love. The Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the spirit of love. Love is a spirit. Love is a spirit. And God is love and God is spirit. Meaning love is God. When we allow God to work in our lives, then we grow in love. We choose to walk in love. Are you understanding me? So the Bible says that love is selfless. Are you understanding me? Love is not selfish. Love rejoices over truth. Love endures. Love perseveres. Are you walking in love? The Bible says Jesus told his disciples that the people of the world shall know you by your love for one another. And he said to them, I give you this one commandment, love one another. The only thing the world will know, will, they will know us, but it's by our love for one another. Tell your neighbor, love your neighbor. But it is impossible to love your neighbor if you don't know how to love yourself. Are you understanding me? And it's impossible to know how to love yourself if you have never received the love of God. That's why I said as a branches you need to receive. Receive the love of God. I know many of us who have been hurt and therefore we have created these walls in our hearts to try and protect ourselves. No honey, receive the love of God. Let the love of Jesus heal you. Let it heal your soul. Let me tell you something. It is impossible for you to become all that God wants you to become unless you heal. So you need to let go of the bitterness, the resentment, the pain, the anger. Let it go. It is not worth it. Let it go. And receive the love of God. Let the love of Jesus heal you. Are you understanding me? Let the love of Jesus heal you. When the love of God heals you, I tell you the truth, you'll be loving everybody. 
Are you understanding me? When someone talks rudely to you or says something that is not cool, you will not, you will not be offended with them. You will understand. I tell you the truth. You will understand. You understand? You know what? I know there's something that is not right with them. I think they're also wounded. I think they're also broken. I think there's someone who did not do right by them. You know, and because you've been healed by Jesus, you have allowed the love of God to heal you, then you become an epitome of grace. Are you understanding me? So God expects the fruit of love from us. We shall be known by the world because of our love. And we shall win the world to Jesus by love. That, that is the tool of discipleship. You win people by love. You draw them to God by love. Another fruit, the Bible says, Gal Galatians chapter 5, it's joy. The scripture says that in the presence of God is fullness of joy. And his right hand pleasures forevermore. Joy. Joy. Joy does not come because everything is, is okay. Joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. When you choose not to be worried, when you choose not to be anxious, and you allow the joy of the Holy Ghost to work in your life, then the world will know that you are disciples of Christ because of the joy that you demonstrate. Tell your neighbor, walk in joy. Be joyful. Rejoice in the Lord your God. You know, rejoicing is a decision you make. Are you understanding me? You make the decision to rejoice. And joy, oftentimes, joy comes by perspective. Are you understanding me? When you get, when you get the perspective of God, and you see the way God sees things, then you walk by joy. Because in your life, there's fullness, there's hope, and a future. The reason why we are so sad, the reason why we are so miserable when you're experiencing struggles in life is because we do not have the perspective of God. Are you understanding me? It's because we do not have the perspective of God. It's because we are not seeing the way God is seeing things. When you have the perspective of God, then your faith is elevated. Even though you're going through issues, you still have joy. Why? Because you know God has a good plan for me. And God has a future and a hope for me. You get excited. Are you understanding me? You are not sidetracked by the issues you're facing. Let me tell you something. As a believer and as a child of God, you do not become miserable because you're going through issues. Embrace the perspective of God. Are you understanding me? The perspective of God comes through prayer and the word of God. The more you pray, the more God opens your eyes to see what he has in store for you. Then you are not set up by what you're seeing here. Are you understanding me? Your eyes are not focused on what you're seeing here on earth. You are set your mind on things above. Set your mind on the things of God. Then you always walk in the fullness of joy. The reason why Jesus said, in my presence there's fullness of joy. It's because you know, when you enter the presence of God, you will attain the perspective of God. And you start seeing things the way God sees them. When you start seeing there's a future for me. My destiny is bright. I will excel. You know, greatness awaits me. My future is colorful. When you have the perspective of God, your faith is elevated. And therefore, you, know, you do not walk according to what you see right now. You walk according to what you've seen in the word of God. Are you understanding me? Joy, joy, it's a decision. You need to make the decision to walk in the word of God. Amen. The third thing the Bible says is the fruit of peace. Jesus said to his disciples, I give you peace not as the world gives. I give you my peace. In other words, the peace of the world is determined by the circumstances that surround it. If the things, if circumstances are good, if my situation is okay, yo, I've been blessed, you know, everything is working in my life, my marriage, yo, it's doing well, and all these things, then I'm at peace. 
But when the storm comes, then I'm, I'm not at peace anymore. But Jesus says, I give you peace. I want you to know this morning that God has given you peace. Embrace and receive the peace of God. Embrace and receive the rest of God. Jesus said, come to me, all you are evil laden. And cast your burdens on me, cast your cares on me. And I'll give you rest. You know, casting, it's an active thing. It's not passive. You know, I'm expecting all these burdens to just fall by themselves, you know, just like that. You know, the kingdom of God, <laughs> the kingdom of God is not like magic. You know, everything, you know, nothing just happens. Christianity, it's active Christianity. You need to make the decision to cast your burdens down. You need to come to a place in life where you're tired of carrying all these burdens. You're tired of living life according to your knowledge and wisdom. According to your it reaches a point in life where you make the decision, you know, I'm going to walk according to the word of God. If God has said I should cast my body and say, God, I'm casting this, but I do not want to carry them. I'm casting them on you. The word cast in the Greek means to throw them at Jesus' feet. God has given you the permission to throw them at Jesus' feet. But most of us, you are so comfortable carrying them. Because you know what happens when you carry burdens? Eh? We draw pity. And they love having some pity parties. You know, I get some pity from people. <laughs> but that cannot change your life. It reaches a point where you choose to walk in peace. You choose to guard your peace. Jesus has already given you peace. Choose to guard the peace of God. When you have peace, then it is, then it is possible to be creative. Do you know it is impossible to be creative and find solutions over your problems when you're anxious and worried? Anxiety and worry, they are deceivers. They deceive you that you're working. They deceive you that you're working things out. They deceive you that you're moving. Uh -uh, you're not moving and you're not working anything out. Receive the peace of God and guard the peace of God. Guard the sanity of your mind. Are you understanding me? The Bible says, they that have fixed my eyes on me, Jesus said, I'll keep them in perfect peace. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on the word of God. Are you understanding me? Fix your eyes on the word of God and guard your peace. Glory be to God. Tell me when my time is up. All right. <laughs> okay, another, another fruit of the spirit is forbearance. Forbearance is patience. And patience, what patience means is uh, it's faith, waiting. Waiting on God while still holding on to your faith. Patience is persistent faith. Persistent faith. Are you understanding me? Now it is impossible to walk in patience if you don't stay in the word of God. You need to stay in the word of God. Stay in the word of God. Stay in the word of God. Continue in the word of God. Because the moment you remove your eyes from the word of God, you will start sinking like Peter. Are you understanding me? Your focus will be stolen by the things of this world. The troubles of this life. If you want to persist in your faith as you wait on God, stay in the word of God. Let the word of God become your reality. Do you know faith, faith is a realm all by itself. The Bible says the faith is the substance of things to fall. The evidence of things not seen. Other versions says is the reality. In other words, faith is a realm. And we can live in the realm of faith. Are you understanding me? When you live in the realm of faith, faith becomes our reality. That, that realm becomes our reality. So I do not live according to what I see. I live according to the realm of faith. I live according to the realm of the word of God. Are you understanding me? That's why I can rejoice even in sufferings. Because I can see that the sufferings of this present time cannot be compared to the glory that is to come. The reason why I can wait patiently on God is because I can see the word of God. 
You know, you need to live in the realm where you see the word of God. You know, naturally we believe what we see, right? It's in the same case in the spirit. You believe what you see in the word of God. Unless the word of God becomes reality to you. You come to a place where you see the word of God. You see relevant in your life, then faith cannot be created. Are you understanding me? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> faith, is a, faith is a reality. The evidence of things not seen. In other words, God can see your faith. You know, how many times you have accused God? God, I had faith. I believed you. Why did you not, um, why did you not answer my prayer? God can see faith. The Bible says when there, is, there, there are some guys who brought their friend who was a paralytic. And the Bible says that God saw their faith. Faith is an evidence. It can be seen. When you walk in peace, you're demonstrating faith. Faith is, peace is an evidence of faith. When you're worried, then, ah, uh ah. -uh. There's no faith. Because faith is an evidence. When you rest, it's an evidence that you have faith. Are you understanding me? When you have persistent faith, patience, it demonstrates. If you can wait on God and still continue speaking the word of God, then it demonstrates, shows that you have faith. Are you understanding me? So we need to walk in patience. And the book of James, chapter 1, verse 2, talks about that allow patience to finish its work. Do not rush God. Are you going through some issues right now? Is God taking you through a process? Allow God to finish his work. Do not rush God. Oh, God, I want you to bless me right now. Oh, I backslide, you know. <laughs> you know, God, I want you to bless me. I'll never come to church again. Eh? Allow patience to finish its work. The Bible says when you allow patience to finish its work, its work, then you become mature, perfect, lacking in nothing. So when we allow God to finish its work, patience, perseverance, the book of Romans chapter 5 talks about allowing perseverance. And perseverance produces character. Are you understanding me? Another fruit that God expects from us is a fruit of character. That comes as a result of allowing patience to finish its work. Persevere. Endure through the process. Do not quit the process. Are you getting me? Do not quit the process. Allow patience to finish its work. Are you waiting on God? Continue waiting on him. Do not give up on God. Do not disconnect yourself from Jesus. Are you understanding me? Another fruit that God expects from us is the fruit of kindness. When my time is almost up, you can come to the keyboard so that I can have a cue. So another fruit that God expects from us is kindness. Tell your neighbor kindness. Be kind. Hey, be kind. Are you understanding me? Be kind. Be sensitive to other people. Don't rough people up. Are you understanding me? You know, there's this thing they say, rubbing in. You know your friend is not walking right with God and stuff. Don't rub in. Offer grace. Kindness is about offering grace. Jesus. Are you understanding me? Offering grace. Offering understanding. You know, the difference between Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus came with both grace and truth. As believers, we need to walk in both grace and truth. Truth, I tell you, what is the truth? But grace, if you're falling in the pit, grace will come and help you out of the pit. Grace and truth. Be kind, be graceful. Offer grace. Glory to God. Offer grace. Offer grace. You have received grace. God was patient with you. Offer grace. Don't be judgmental. Understand where people are coming from. The Bible says he who has been forgiven much understands much. If you know where God has brought you from, when you see others struggling, you offer them grace. Come, I will help you. I will help you out of this. I'm not judging you. I will help you. I understand the struggle is real. So offer grace. 
Be kind. You know, if someone doesn't get the notes, be kind. Teach them. Train them. Offer grace. Grace is about holding another person's hand and helping them the way God has helped you. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Tell your neighbor, be kind. Another fruit is the fruit of goodness. The fruit of goodness. Now goodness, according to the Greek word, the root goes back to integrity. Goodness has to do with who you are. Kindness has to do with what you do. But goodness has to do with who you are. Your character, your integrity, your persona, who you have allowed God to become. The Bible says that God is good. That is the identity of God. That is the character and the persona of God. Are you understanding me? So when the Bible talks about the fruit of the spirit is goodness. We allow God to make us who he is. We allow God to make us good people. And the Bible says that we do not repay evil with evil. But repay evil with good. Evil has to do with a person. The are posture of a person. The character of a person. So good also has to do with the character and the hard posture of the person. Are you understanding me? So allow God to shape you and to cause you to become good. Amen? My time is almost over. Another fruit is faithfulness. Tell your neighbor, be faithful. Be committed to the cause. The fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness. If you find yourself that you're wanting it, can people rely on you? Can people depend on you? Can people trust you? Can they trust that you're one? Can you be trusted? There has to do with faithfulness. And the Bible says that if you're faithful with little, then you'll be faithful with much. Start being faithful with time. Start being faithful to your, to your spouse or your children. Whatever it is, start being faithful by getting class on time. You know, be faithful with the little things. Be faithful with your offerings. Be faithful with the word of God. You know, when people are starting with your walk with God, I tell them, just pray for five minutes a day. Sometimes we overstretch ourselves and that's why we fail. Be faithful first with the little. Then trust God to expand you and to stretch you. So tell your neighbor, be faithful. Another thing is gentleness and self-control as I close. Gentleness and self-control. Tell your neighbor, be gentle. The next chapter talks about when, when a brother has fallen. Paul tells the, the body of Christ that to go and reach out in gentleness lest you fall. Be gentle. Don't rough people up. Are you understanding me? Don't be rude to people. Don't rub in. Be gentle. Be understanding and be kind. And lastly, self-control. Tell, tell your neighbor self-control. Self-control has to do with the spirit of discipline. The Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, the spirit of sound mind, and the spirit of wisdom. Discipline is a spirit. Self-control is a spirit. Allow God to help you to walk in self-control. But discipline has also to do with you making the decision. Every time you're tempted to do what is not right, choose to do what is right. God has given you the willpower. He has given you the power and the strength and the grace to do what is right. You know the word of God. You know what the word of God says, choose to do what is right. You have the power. You have power over sin. You have power over the flesh. But also empower your spirit man. Allow God to submit and surrender your life to Jesus. And allow God and submitting and surrendering your life to Jesus does not mean, it doesn't also include just giving your life to Jesus. It's an everyday thing. Laying your life down so that God can have his way. Choosing to do God's way. That is laying down your life. Amen. You may rise upon your feet in the name of Jesus.